Okay, we're gonna talk about the anatomy of a lumbar X-ray. Ching, and answer the what questions. What ways can we count lumbar vertebrae on an X-ray, and what anatomy can you see on a frontal, lateral, and oblique lumbar X-ray? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So, a couple of things before we begin talking about these lumbar vertebrae. First, I'm not a radiologist, I'm an anatomist. Therefore, the uh, kind of the background of this is it's it's uh, coming an understanding of lumbar anatomy using lumbar x-rays, not so much as being a radiologist interpreting lumbar x-rays. There's the lumbar vertebra, and those are all the bony landmarks. And if that's something that has been a while since you've done it, if you want a refresher, click on the link in the notes section below for a tutorial on ver vertebral landmarks. So counting lumbar vertebrae. So you can find the sacrum and count up. Or you can find the last rib, which shows the T12 vertebra, and count down. So let's do first find the sacrum and count up. So there's our sacrum, and there's the ilium, and there's the sacroiliac joint in between. And if you find the sacrum, then you know where L5 is. And you find L5, you know L4, L3, L2, and L1 vertebrae. And the next one is to find the last rib at T12 and count down. So there we've got that last rib. If that's the last rib, that's T12, which makes that L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. And then there's the top of the sacrum and there's the S1 sacral vertebra. So if you find the sacrum now on a lateral view, you can count up as well. So this is lateral. So there's our sacrum. There's our S1 sacral vertebra. There's L5, L4, L3, L2, and L1 vertebrae and then there's T12. Okay, so in talking about lumbar x-rays now, we're gonna do frontal first, then lateral, and then the oblique view. So first the lumbar spine from a frontal view. So there are the few lumbar vertebrae that we're gonna focus on like that. And there are all the landmarks that we're going to cover. So let's start first with this one. We see this structure here and you think, what is that? That's the vertebral body. It's the largest part that they have. In the looking from the top, it looks kind of like kidney bean shaped. Next is this structure here. Anatomist said, hey, what's this thing coming out the sides? And it's a process, we'll call it the transverse process, the things that stick out on the side. Then we have these circles right here. What are they? Well, those circles are pedicles. And the pedicles, if we were to now take a look at a view, this is actually an inferior view of one of the lumbar vertebrae, and the pedicles are there in yellow. And now let's take uh, basically a coronal plane and do shing and cut that off. And we now look at those two stubs of the pedicles. That's what it looks like. They actually look like two owl's eyes, so that when you see them, I always picture them looking like owl eyes in a uh, frontal view of a lumbar x ray. Now, what is this space between pedicles? Well, that is the vertebral foramen. Now, the if we now take a look at the letters P, that there are pedicles on either side, that's the vertebral foramen that's in between, that's housing the spinal cord and cauda equina. So that now, as we see these two vertical lines going in between these adjacent pedicles, that's the vertebral canal and you can see, whoops, the vertebral canal, and there's those pedicles. So if we were to zoom in like this, there are those two lines showing the vertebral canals just inside those cut pedicles. There's our spinal cord, and there's our cauda equina in that area. Something I would I make mention is, on x-rays, soft tissue-like nerves do not show, so you have to superimpose your knowledge on that. So when you see a slipped vertebra, you can start getting an idea of what it may do to nerves that you can't see, but you can superimpose your knowledge onto it. So what is this space called from here to here? What is that? Well, that is our intervertebral foramen, also known as our neural foramen. Anatomists often use intervertebral foramen because it's descriptive. Radiologists often use neural foramen because it tells what it does, because down there we have these descending nerve rootlets that come out below and exit the uh, intervertebral foramen right below its associated pedicle. So in this posterior lateral view, there's our vertebral bodies, there are the pedicles, there's the neural foramen, and there's a spinal nerve coming out of that neural foramen. What is that thing, that teardrop shape looking thing there? That's a spinous process. So if we now take a look at a posterior view, that's the spinous process that we see, the nose of the moose. Now what is that thing right there flanking either side? That's the laminae. So it's that structure right there is the laminae. 
What about that thing right there? That's an inferior articular facet, also known as an integular, inferior articular process. And there's that structure right there. That's a superior articular facet. And so there we can now see both of those together, which then begs the question, hey, what's that in between them? What is that joint? Well, that's a facet joint, also known as a zygopophyseal joint. And so if we zoom in here like this, there is an inferior articular facet, a superior articular facet, and shing, right between them is a facet joint. Same on that x-ray right there. There's like, in these ones, there's, I think, like close to 100 of these joints, synovial plane joints like this all throughout the vertebral column. I'm just showing you one. And if we now take a look at this as it rotates, take a look there, you can see it between super and infer adjacent. I couldn't figure out how to put an arrow on this thing at the same time. So there it is again coming around, those facet joints. Now let's talk about a lateral view of the lumbar spine like that. Okay, so here we have another structure. And what is that? That's a vertebral body, that really big square-like structure. It takes the big brunt of the weight of the body. What about that blank space? I'm pointing to nothing. That's an intervertebral disc. Now, it is, you can't see anything, but it's there because if we see a vertebra and a vertebra and there's an intervertebral disc right between, it's actually made of fibrocartilage that just doesn't show up on an x ray. It's not dense enough. And an intervertebral disc has an outer annulus fibrosis and an inner nucleus pulposus. It's much like a jelly donut where the nucleus pulposus is the jelly, mm, jelly, or Boston cream, if you will, because I like that. The annulus fibrosus is the uh, pastry on the outside. Either way, the jelly donut doesn't show up on an x-ray. Next is this structure here, the nose of a moose. That's the spinous process. And then what about this right here to coming off the side? That is the laminae, plural, lamina, singular. What about this structure here? Attaching the vertebral body to the uh, vertebral arch. That's the pedicle. And then that space between adjacent pedicles is the intervertebral foramen or the neural foramen, and it's between the supra and infra adjacent pedicles. What about that? That's a superior articular facet. And that one is its associated inferior articular facet with the facet joint in between, or zygopophyseal joint, as we've said. So, and it does this kind of motion. I've kind of exaggerated a little bit, but the flexion and extension motion. Now the structure called pars, or also known as pars interarticularis. Now you actually, it's hard to just point to it at first. So one of the ways you actually find the pars is, it's, it means a part of, you just find these four structures and it's in between them. It triangulates it into there. So you find our superior articular facet and the inferior articular facet of the same vertebra. And then you find the pedicle and you find the lamina. And between all four of those things, shing, there is the pars right there. Okay? That's the pars, pardon me. A couple of other things as you see this yellow line. That is showing where the anterior longitudinal ligament would be located. And then this one right here on the back of the vertebral body, that's the posterior longitudinal ligament. So one of the things that you hope to see in a lumbar vertebrae on the side is that beautiful, nice curved line. You don't want to see this. Yes, not so good. Yes, not so good. This is spond spondylolisthesis, which is like the slippage of a vertebra, so you don't see that nice lordotic or secondary curvature. All right, now let's talk about the lumbar spine from an oblique view. Now to show with this oblique view, this one is hard for me when I first started learning imaging. Uh, there's a lateral view, and there's a frontal view, and that's an oblique view. Frontal, oblique, frontal, oblique, frontal. Now watch a vertebral body, oblique. See if you can find a transverse process and follow it, and see if you can find a spinous process and follow it. This can, becomes important in kind of understanding this oblique view, uh, how things are just off to an angle. And they're all the structures, the same structures we've done before that we're going to cover. And to best see these, let's look for a Scotty dog, shall we? And what's a Scotty dog? That's a Scotty dog, okay? Scottish Terrier. And so 
to see that, look at this x-ray and shing, there is the Scotty dog. And so what happens then is we look at all these bony landmarks and we associate them with some part of the dog. So we now have a dog part and each of those dog parts are associated with a bony landmark. So let's go through each one, shall we? So um, let's now first cover the nose. So you can see the nose of the Scotty dog on the left. Now look at the x-ray. You see it? That nose, that is a transverse process. Now let's look for the pedicle. Okay, you can see the eye on the Scotty dog and the pedicle. Now take a look. There is that eye of the Scotty dog and just, I'm gonna outline it to make sure you can see it. Now what about the ear? Well, look at the Scotty dog and that's where the ear is and so it's the superior articular facet of that vertebra. Now what about the front leg? Well, the front leg on the Scotty dog is the inferior articular facet of that same vertebra. Now what about the body? So the body is showing the lamina. Okay, of that vertebra. And then the hind leg is showing the spinous process in the Scotty dog on the, on the x-ray. And then the neck is showing the pars interarticularis, or simply known as the pars. Another way of thinking of it is just like we find the superior articular facet and the inferior articular facet and the pedicle, and then the lamina, and shing, there is the pars right in between them, okay? Right there is the pars. And that, my friend, is the anatomy of a lumbar x-ray in a nutshell.